Hi, my name is Morgan Baker, and I'm happy to be here as part of Boulder Bookstore's author series. And I'm here to talk about my debut memoir, Emptying the Nest, Getting Better at Goodbyes. It just came out, and I'm very excited about it. The story that I cover takes place predominantly during a one-year period of time, although it does stretch on either side a little bit. When my older daughter was a senior in high school, the family, as a family adventure, bred our Portuguese water dog, Spray, and Spray had 10 puppies, which were a lot of puppies. And we kept one, and we found forever homes for the other nine. And as the puppies left, Maggie started getting um, responses from college applications. And then at the end of the year, Maggie, my older daughter, went off to college. And I have a history of depression. I don't do change or transition very well. And that was a very big transition. And so I sort of collapsed. And I, if, as you can tell, because I'm here talking about it, I survived and got better. And I learned that saying goodbye does not mean that you are closing the door on a relationship. It just shifts what the relationship looks like. And when my younger daughter went off to college, I did much better. I still was sad, but I wasn't like catastrophically sad. So the inspiration for the book came from uh, that experience and realizing that I needed, I process by writing. And so I needed to work through all this. And so I wrote about it and I thought it what it's a story that just isn't about me. It's about many parents because parents inevitably send their kids out into the world, whether they go to college or the military or work, they leave. And that's part of the evolution of a family. And so I thought that other people might benefit from my story and realizing that like if I got through it, anybody can get through it. What are some of the things that helped you get through your depression? So depression is not fun. Uh, it's you feel really crappy and sort of like there's no hope. But I was very fortunate that my husband was really incredibly patient and took really good care of me. And there were moments where he would just sit on the couch and hold my hand. And that was all I needed. Um, I don't think he particularly enjoyed this experience. I don't think it was fun for him to see me in the depths of this depression because it was pretty deep. But he really maintained his patience and showed me how much he loves me by um, being there for me. I also was able to reach out to a few friends, not a lot, but a few friends, and they helped. And the other thing that I did, which sort of surprised me, was I went on Facebook. Um, this was you know, 10, 12 years ago, so Facebook was a little different. But I posted that I was struggling and I needed a list of books to read so that I could be distracted from my situation. And people from all over came through for me with just lists of fabulous books that were able to distract me from my situation. What advice would you give any parents who, out there who are about to become empty nesters? So my big advice, having now learned this firsthand, is to recognize what your identities are. For me, I identified myself as a mother. That was it. I was like, yes, I was a wife and I taught college and I wrote, but my predominant identity was mother. And then when that was sort of, um, the shape of that was changed, I didn't know how to figure out what else I had. So I now know that I am a quilter, I have, I've done ceramics, I bake, I love my dogs, I love my husband. There are other things in my life that bring me joy. And I didn't anticipate that when I went into my depression. But I think if you can plan in as much as planning as possible and sort of think, okay, they're going to leave, but I have this, this, and this to fill in the void. And those things can be really fun. Adventures and activities that are fun are just a great way of moving forward. What are a few books you read during the pandemic that you really love? 
So it won't come as any surprise that I love reading memoirs. I also love reading fiction, but um, I'm going to show you four memoirs that I loved. So this is In the Country of Women by Susan Strait. This is really good. This is In the Company. This is, no, it is not. This is Once More We Saw Stars by Jason Green. This is really fun, or it's not fun, but it's a really good book. What Comes Next and How to Like It by Abigail Thomas and In Love by Amy Bloom. All of these are really fabulous books. Some of them are a bit sad, but um, the end of the books are show the happy ending. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about emptying the nest, getting better at goodbyes? So one of the things that I did in the book and that I do, I, I mentioned earlier is that I quilt and quilting grounds me, centers me when I'm not sure about what's going on around me. If I can go and sew, it helps a lot. I used to make my quilts in the dining room. And now that I have an empty bedroom or two upstairs, I have taken over my daughter's bedroom as my sewing room. My husband gave me a great uh, um, radio thing and I blast my music and I sew and it's great. And during the pandemic, which all of us had our issues, I made 14 quilts and that got me through the pandemic and it gets me through tough times. Can you read us a short passage from your book? Sure, I'd be happy to. I am now going to read about um, the beginning of the birthing process for the puppies, which was quite dramatic. Morgan, Matt scream from the first floor, reached the third floor and woke me up. It's happening. I think it's dead. No. I leapt from my bed, ran past the girls' bedrooms and charged downstairs. I arrived in the back room, the coldest room in our house at the end of January, and found Matt holding a puppy in one hand while Spray lay on the gray carpet at his feet. I think it's dead, Matt said again. He did not look overjoyed with the birth of this puppy. He stared at me as though I had an answer. I didn't. I was going to kill Matt for coming up with this crazy idea. And now we had a dead puppy. This wasn't happening. My nightmare was coming to life. Upstairs, Ellie had run into Maggie's room, screaming, Maggie, Maggie, all the puppies are dead. Maggie jolted awake, worried she had slept through her chemistry exam. Once she realized it was still hours away, she shifted her worries to the puppies. The girls ran downstairs in their pajamas. Ellie stopped on the second floor. She had no interest in seeing dead puppies. She would wait it out. Maggie joined us. It was 3.30 in the morning, and we looked at each other, not sure what to do. We weren't supposed to be alone. We had made our plans carefully to be with either Laura or Yvette. Our plans were toast. Call someone, Matt barked. When he checked on Spray at 1 a.m., all was fine, he told me. But when he woke up again, Spray was licking something on his stomach, a puppy sack. Matt didn't know how long the puppy had been lying on top of him. He tore open the sack and then yelled for me. I called Laura and the vet tech from Slade. Laura had been right. Spray wasn't waiting. Laura told us to use a bulb syringe to suction the mucus out of the puppy's mouth but I hadn't had one of those in the house since the kids were little. Almost immediately, she told us later, she turned to her partner and said, that puppy is going to die. The vet tech answered her phone and promptly hung up. I wasn't wearing my glasses and I can't hear or see without them. I was confused, she said. How's Spray? Spray's fine, I said. Spray sighed. She was unfazed by all the activity around her. I told the vet tech about the puppy. Morgan, tell Matt to hold the puppy in the palm of his hand, cover it with a towel, and gently swing the puppy towards him from his shoulder down to his knees to clear its lungs. Before I could repeat the message, Matt was doing it. How'd you know to do that, I asked. All that reading material you gave me, he answered and smiled. The puppy opened its mouth and peeked. Looks like the bitch is going to do it herself, the tech said and hung up. The puppy breathed. I breathed. The puppy lived. I let Matt live. Ellie ran downstairs to join us. We all stood there looking at the puppy and then at each other. The pup was a white male with brown spots. His coat was slicked back and he looked more like a mouse than a dog. The girls cooed over him, but I wasn't sure he was that cute. 
Spray paced around Matt's feet until he leaned down and put the puppy under her nose so she could smell him. Then Matt laid him in the whelping box with a heating pad. He was very alone in there. We hoped Spray would follow him and give birth to the rest of the puppies in there. Whelping boxes are large wooden boxes in which the mother dog or dam can lie in to give birth, nurse, and sleep with her pups. They have little shelves on the sides to keep the mama dog from rolling over on the puppies. Since the nightingales had given us their whelping box, Spray was now going to give birth in the same box in which she had been birthed, except she didn't want to get in the box. I looked down the hallway and saw Laura standing on the other side of the glass oval in our front door. I could do this with Laura. We would be in capable hands. I couldn't believe she had come to us in the middle of the night. I took a deep breath. Our urging finally got Spray to step into the whelping box, but instead of lying down with the puppy, she picked him up by the scruff of his neck and tried to deposit him outside the box. I freaked. No, Spray, no, put the puppy back, I almost yelled. I've been told repeatedly that my voice carries. I have a loud one. Maggie and Ellie joined in. Spray, no, they chorus. No, Spray. Laura turned to me. Morg, she thinks she did something bad like she pooped. If you remain calm, she'll be calm. She doesn't want to be in the box. Are you okay if she gives birth on the rug? My shoulders caved in. I'll be calm, I said, and sank down on the floor next to Spray. I leaned against the couch, even half asleep, Laura with her cropped gray hair was commanding. Spray trusted me. She probably wanted all of us close to her. Bitches wouldn't let their loved ones out of their sight when they were birthing. We weren't planning on leaving her. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed this and I hope you guys all go and buy your books from Boulder Bookstore. Thank you. 